All right, it's big update day. Epic tweaked a lot of heroes. Some were really good changes like Cloak Shadow. Some were pretty controversial changes like Blakebeard. I will talk about that entire subject in uh, order. So we're gonna go from top down. We'll talk about Blakebeard at the end. And then there were some bug fixes. This will be linked down below if you guys wanna get some more information. I also have a nice little write-up that Archer did. He went into the game. I mean, we can all do this. And he just looked at the different values and gave me a nice little write-up. I tested just about everything and uh, wrote my little opinions here and we're going to start with Cloaked Shadow. So the change to Cloaked Shadow was really basic. Basically, with Cloaked Shadow, when you attack an enemy, you will enter Shadow Stance as a ninja. When you kill an enemy, you enter Shadow Stance. He makes it so that you do damage. In the previous version of the game, he was giving you 6 base damage. Now it's 16. That is actually kind of a lot. You can see a bit of gameplay here. Um, it's solo 140, so this isn't truly representative of the end game, although I do have some footage for that we'll get to in a second. But you can see it's actually pretty good damage again solo 140 that's not usually where i play that's not the end all be all but it's actually pretty solid damage i also went ahead and put him in the commander perk and you can see how that went right here i kill an enemy and it's two shotting a basic pitcher which was Really impressive. I don't think I ever recommend running him in the commander's slot. Ugh, Paleo Luna is so good. Assassin Sarah is so good. Totally rocking out is a team perk that exists. Like, I don't know if you should ever put him in the commander slot, but you can see I'm basically just killing an enemy every once in a while and everything in this encampment is just dying around me, which is really, really impressive. So I took him to the 164 player, put him in support, and I believe I had Paleo Luna in the lead. And you can sort of see how that went uh, right here. This is an encampment. If I uh, back it up to the beginning of this, yeah, this is a great showcase. So I killed one enemy and you can see how fast everything around me is dying. Because that base damage is scaling like with my teammates that are in the party, you can see that uh, once I get an elimination here in a second, I'll be patient. Uh, I think I'm backing off the hill. Yeah, okay, so once I get an elimination, it's actually pretty good damage. The 160 enemies are dying. I just focus on the Mist Monster with that elimination. All the babies are dead without me even having to focus on them. I'm really, I'm really split on this perk. I'm really torn because he's not incredible. It's not like he's maybe better than Battle Beaten support, which is our usually, which is our usual pick in this configuration. But um, yeah, pretty strong, pretty strong indeed. Just so we're all on the same page, this is basically the build I was just using with two changes. Saurian Focus was swapped out for Saurian Vigor, which we will talk about in a second. And Legendary Blade is what I swapped out for uh, the, the, the Cloak Shadow. Typically in modern configurations, this Legendary Blade is swapped out for um, for uh, Battle Beat, like I said. That increases your melee attack speed. And Assassin's Sarah can be swapped out for uh, Whiteout Fiona because she increases your chance to crit. But I deleted that build because I'm testing a lot of heroes. Moving on to the next one, we got Stare Down Southie. This is the loadout that we use for Stare Down Southie. I put him in the Commander perk. Happy Holidays to reduce the cooldown. I get I got Fragment Generation under Warranty from Jilly Teacup. This is not a loadout guy. This is just sort of a basic Teddy build here. Uh, if you want a Ninja loadout, by the way, I'll probably link that down below for Cloak Shadow. But this is how he performed. Basically, they made it so that his perk, uh, you know, it zaps enemies with uh, energy damage. That's pretty normal. It went from every two seconds to every 1.65, which is good. It's a direct upgrade. He was already pretty good, kind of. Teddy builds are are typically for early games so ventures or if you're a player that's like power level 120 or less so all throughout stonewood plankerton candy valley and early twine teddy builds are actually pretty good i'm testing in the 140 just in fairness it's not uh, obviously that good this smasher i don't think ever got eliminated but yeah stare down southie basically just got a direct improvement he went from two seconds to 1.65 and even less than that in the lead or a little bit different in the lead so uh yeah moving on to fireflower eagle eye or eagle fire yeah so i tested her in a couple of configurations this is the one where she was in the lead with happy holidays i gave her all the support perks that make sense including going coconuts and you could see that it does pretty good damage she got kind of a massive damage increase if you look at this uh it's three base damage every one second is what she used to be in support now it's seven every half second so it's basically 14 damage a second instead of three which is a huge bonus in the lead it tripled to nine damage instead of three but now it's 24 instead of seven and that's kind of a lot but you can see it's uh it's pretty good i mean i don't know happy holidays is really good at reducing the phase shift cooldown so i went ahead and i tried her with shifting gears in the lead and that was um kind of okay as well but i, I tried this versus a smasher and it did next to nothing i think fire flower is a really 
fun character if you want to run her in dungeons early ventures early game you can probably kill a bunch of basic enemies with just your phase shift maybe even encampments could be really fun i think she's definitely a lot stronger than she used to be but not exactly a top pick uh tricera ops i've been showing her kind of passively but i can sort of do this right here uh what we are looking at is in this bottom left section here tricera ops is every four seconds giving me um not that much she used to be every five seconds and i actually did the math on that so previously if you had zero health which is not possible so say you had one bit of health it used to take 235 seconds to get to full and that's just under four minutes now it's 188 seconds which is just over three minutes for reference a coconut as you can probably see in this gameplay behind here a coconut will heal you let's see uh 721 uh, all the way up to that yeah so coconuts are still giving you about a third of your health with residual healing for 30 seconds they were not nerfed in this update all right they were nerfed that you can now only hold eight of them at a time i guess that's not being shown because my cam's covering it but you can see i'm holding six here because you can't hold more than eight and that's um that's all they did coconuts are still a far superior healing version uh, healing method even like um even like survivalists better so Sorian Vigor she went from five seconds in between heals to four which is uh well you can see my opinion on that was lol <laughs> next is Black Knight Garridan there's really nothing to test here uh he's a kinetic impact guy now every single elimination reduces your going constructor cooldown by a little bit it's uh one second and two seconds in the lead that's not a huge bonus but hey if you really like going constructor you're gonna be happy about that change red willow got buffed so let me see if I can find my uh, solo Red Willow lead. So this is a 140 zone. This is me doing Red Willow. She now explodes uh, where you're going, not where you were. I think that's always been the case, but I've only used this hero for like 20 minutes of my life, and you can sort of see why. She is uh, tripled in the lead from 20 damage to 60, and it is, mm, you know, <laughs> mm, it's not really doing it she is really really not a hero you should ever use i think they could triple her damage again and then we'd be talking but uh red willow still pretty much useless sentinel hype actually really impressed me uh this is the build that i made right here this is a teddy loadout where i used so I got really excited because our recent hero Brainstorm exists, or Brainstormer, I don't remember his name, but Brain Freeze is where your decoy explodes and freezes enemies for three seconds. Then I don't even know all the support characters here. If I still have this built, maybe we can find out together because this is a really interesting build in my opinion. You can pretty much perma-stall enemies. So we got Sentinel Hype in the lead. Uh, this is, here we go, Brainstorm freezes enemies. Then we've got uh, this guy from the Military Llama, Savage or Bull, makes it so when your decoy is destroyed, it explodes. Then we've got Kyle the 13th from the Fort Nightmare section, basically decoy becomes ricochet and then we got controller harper she's a base game hero you can find her in regular missions all the time she reduces the cooldown by 17 percent and finally we got conqueror magnus with the decoy dealing damage every second all of that comes together in a very beautiful way you can see when i put down the decoy enemies are damaging themselves on it it's it's bursting out damage once per second and the cooldown in the bottom right is very important you can see i'm sorry if this is messy but uh yeah you can see i'm down to three seconds and it freezes enemies and then when they unthaw, my decoy is ready to be used again. So that's actually a pretty good bonus. In fact, if I decrease this size, maybe we can see it a lot more clearer. You can see all the enemies are taking damage. I'm taking out the throwing thoughts just for, you know, gameplay purposes here. But you can see with three seconds on the timer, they're all frozen in place and now they can move. And now they're following me and they're stalled right away. So if you use the brainstorm perk to freeze the targets, you are functionally perma-stalling enemies and if you take out any weapon like a deatomizer you could do some really really effective damage which is interesting if you're a low power level getting carried up or if you're a lazy player you know end game player maybe you want to do encampments in a fun way i recommend this decoy build controller harper was buffed so that she gives you now uh let's see if we can find it here together one and a half seconds in support is now three seconds which is double and then four and a half seconds went to six one and a half seconds might not sound like much but like i said that is a really important number just freezing all the enemies in place is uh really really nice with with brainstorm and i think decoy has always been pretty good but now you can stall enemies infinitely so 
do with that information what you will. My favorite buff is Warden Kyle. Look at this. They sextupled his healing and support from 3.75 base health to 22.5. And, and in the lead, they tripled it to 33.75. But that's not all. You probably saw that message in there, but I want to go find him so I can show this a little more organically. Warden Kyle now gives you energy. One, I'm sorry, two energy per one second in support and three energy per one second in the lead. I got very excited about about this because my favorite loadout in the entire game is a is a loadout I've shown many times. That's Blackout, uh, the AR with Flash AC. I'm going to explain this very quickly because it's insanely powerful, but also quickly because I've covered this in many videos. Basically, when you activate this perk by reloading your weapon, the explosion, if you use the correct hero ability damage and all that, does a ridiculous amount of damage. And it can crit, and since we don't have uh, any need for a crit rating perk because of first shot Rio and support here, I can't see my loadout for some reason. What is going on? Um, she's giving us 100% chance to crit. Quick Fingers is reloading when we phase shift. Assault crit damage is giving us more crit damage. Phase and Confuse is giving us more phase shift. And Fuel for the Fallen is what we used to need to get energy. Well, we went ahead. This is the wrong video. We went ahead, put him this whole configuration together. I'm going to actually make this smaller again so that we can all see the energy values in the bottom right. And Matteo went ahead and ran him in support. And you could see that the energy in the bottom left just never ever runs out it was never really running out before but running this entire mission it's like nine minutes maybe i can upload this unlisted if you guys want it or not but um basically without base md you would run out of energy slowly i think i demonstrated that at a certain point yeah you can see i'm actually down to like seven energy you can see this is me just activating the ability i'm down to 45 activating the ability i'm down to 42 activating i'm down to 33 and it just works its way down and down and down until i'm actually choking on energy here i don't have any more i need 15 to phase shift i'm down to 7 13 but Later on, when I'm standing on his base, uh, or at least in range of it, not only am I standing on it getting enough health to keep me relatively alive, but not too much health, because I know this build is complicated, that's why I've made many builds, but there's a, many videos on it. There's another caveat there that the damage of this perk scales with how little health you have. So, this is actually giving you enough health to be alive and actually take a hit from an enemy and not literally be 1 HP, which is possible, but not uh, enough to be tanky enough to stay alive, but not too much to completely remove your damage. And you can see with that extra energy, I'm just never, ever running out. It's subtle, but I'm never, ever running out. And there is one more thing they actually changed about his perk, which isn't shown in Archer's write-up, but it's shown right here. The heal over time effect now persists a few seconds after you step away. So you can be standing on the base and get healed and get your energy. And if you step away, you have three seconds of, you know, one heal uh, per, per second, healing per second. And that's actually really good. So you can step off the base and still be getting the bonus. And you can see in the bottom left there, I am just barely maintaining enough energy. If I'm getting eliminations with Fuel for the Fallen and I'm getting the healing or the energy from this. I'm getting eight energy per second, which 16 is uh, plenty for a phase shift. That means every other second, every two seconds, I am getting enough for a phase shift. And it is uh, really good. Really, really good. It is a beautiful synergy, not just for that blackout build, but if you are, Archer said it is in the write up. Sorry, Archer, I didn't mean to give you bad credit. Um, he absolutely did write that in there. I just never read this fully, and that's my fault. Thank you, Archer, for being so thorough. You did a better job than I realized. Um, but yeah. This is not just really good for Blackout, but honestly, in general, Constructors are already some of the best heroes in the entire game. Throwing down base Kyle and making your walls super thick or Ice King and freezing enemies is super, super strong. In fact, I just made a recent video on the channel showcasing the top 10 must-have Constructors. I definitely recommend checking that out because if I would have made that video <laughs> just a little bit later, I think Ward and Kyle would have been in there because that is an incredible amount of healing. You guys saw from that video, that's every single second you are just passively healing to full and you're getting energy and constructors are already very strong. So you can just slot him into support and it's no big deal. And I know there's a lot going on here. That's for everybody on the base. So this is team wide healing. It's not like survivalist who just heals you for getting kills. This is healing everybody that stands on your base, which is really, 
really cool. So Warden Kyle, he might be the winner of the buffs today. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously biased with that blackout build, but that's a really good perk. If you're getting carried adventures or if you're the low level in the party, healing and giving energy to your teammates, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Venturian now has more black here. Archer was a better write up than the uh, there we go. Home base report. So previously he had three projectiles out from your crescent kick and it did 25 base damage. Now it's five, which is 40 percent more. All right. Well, I guess it's 66 percent more. And then they now do double damage. So that's a big damage bonus. Apparently, it's pretty good at killing targets. I didn't test this one because you can see it's the bottom of the list. And I was told by Archer that the lead is not actually doing the energy damage it's supposed to. So this might make Crescent Kick usable. I am told this is pretty good damage. I'm sorry I don't have footage, but I um, I, I had a lot of fun testing everything else. So I'm, I left that one alone for now. But maybe Crescent Kick is a little viable now a little viable but yeah prickly patroller was also tested and she is uh, well let's see so this is me healing with coconuts with the cloak shadow in the lead i believe yeah cloak shadow lead prickly support you can see they they die pretty quick now i don't have like super clean footage of this because it's, it's hard to just let enemies attack you but she does pretty good damage she now does 13 base damage instead of 10 which is barely anything but her perk is now constantly afflicting targets after they attack you which is pretty good it's pretty good um it's it's kind of nice you can also use her in the commander perk and that went kind of okay enemies smacked me and they do die i'm showing the build here real quick i put bomb suit so i could stay alive more um it's not like you can afk high level missions i'm sure you could put swamp knight in the lead and use that build everybody loves and prickly is actually pretty good if you're a newbie player or you get attacked a lot maybe if you want to just throw her in support for like a melee build she can be kind of nice but you're not going to suddenly cheese games so i don't know i think that's a good spot i don't think prickly patroller ever needed to be doing all of your damage otherwise you could just afk missions and that's no good but it's actually all right. It's actually all right. That additional base damage, I, I think that's not technically affliction. I'm not certain how it's classed, but uh, yeah, it, it says affliction damage. So if that is actually applying affliction damage, maybe you could put damage to afflicted on your weapon and that might matter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's the last hero that I wanted to talk about before the big news. Let's talk about what they did to Blakebeard's stash. So, their wording here, reduce the number of cannonball grenades and coconuts that drop from the Blakebeard stash at a time and limited how many can be held at once. What that means is, uh, if I lower my thing here so we can all watch this together, it took me a little while to get some kills, I'll explain everything in a second, but you can see as I, I fast forward through the footage, I am capped at holding eight cannonballs at once. You can see I'm leaving it on the ground, and I'm also capped at eight coconuts that also applies to crossbones barrett in regular missions you can now only hold eight coconuts i have seen a lot of outrage on this and that's because reddit users are terminally online and they don't have a well-balanced approach to looking at the world i honestly believe eight coconuts in a regular mission is probably fine i have used coconuts and support probably more than any hero in the entire game of save the world and i almost never actually use eight coconuts there are certain games where you're taking a ton of damage you're running a melee build you're getting hit a lot and coconuts are the way that you stay alive i understand in those games you might want like 20 of them i don't know if capping it at eight is fair but epic obviously knows coconuts are really annoying you can see this is the most annoying part of it like coconuts are really really strong and they obviously wanted to nerf it a little bit so now you can only hold eight which is i don't know with the cannonballs i think it's fine because I feel like getting hit with the cap of eight just encourages me to use them more often because I find myself not really know like I find myself knowing that I can't carry any more so I might as well just throw them before I open up the chest so personally speaking this is just me I've always forgotten I have coconuts I always make my ventures videos showcasing this loadout and then I just not coconuts uh, cannonballs I make my videos showcasing this build and then I just don't even use my cannonballs that is kind of a thing of the past knowing that i can't even carry more than eight but the coconuts is pretty brutal i will say the peg legs are not doing any less damage although apparently they are meant to scale to the mission you're in more carefully i did have a wide array of people in my party i tried to queue a mission that averaged our levels well maybe it's a little lower than it could have been so i haven't done extensive testing but it seemed like the peg leg is still plenty strong i might be wrong about that but it sounds like it's still good and 
Yeah, as long as you're throwing cannonballs in the middle of the fight and you're eating your coconuts, it should feel the same. They wrote that in the home base report as well. It should feel the same as usual. And there are a couple of complaints. Like I said, this clip I'm showing you specifically, this moment right here is really annoying because when you are capped at full, it is... It, it, it ruins my my OCD. I don't have OCD, but like it feels like a trigger to watch them all get laid on the ground and you can't even pick them back up. They now despawn after one minute and the treasure chest despawn after one minute as well. So you are just leaving them behind and it creates this gameplay loop where I am now encouraged to go use my cannonballs and run backwards to go and get the cannonballs because I just don't want to leave them behind, which is a really frustrating way to play. And they did not improve picking up treasure chests. It is still a 5% drop rate, and you can, you can see in this later gameplay, it's uh, maybe uh, further along here. You can still not pick up the cannonballs while you're being attacked. So if you're taking damage from an enemy, you can't pick up the treasure chests. I, I keep saying the wrong thing, but hopefully I'm getting the right information out. I, I die, that's my fault. But you can't pick them up while you're taking damage anymore, and it's still a 5% drop rate. So there were a couple of moments in this game, you can actually see it here with the two cannonballs. I was running out of cannonballs while I was waiting to get a chest and you can now only hold six peg legs. So there's a real chance if you're getting unlucky in a game that you might look, I can't pick up my, my treasure chest here. This is what I was what I was trying to show. There's a real chance that you will run out of peg legs and cannonballs before you get another treasure chest and then your team perk is useless. I'm really not thrilled about that idea and it's uh, it's a really controversial change. I think overall the team perk is still the same, but I can understand why people are upset. So moment to moment gameplay should feel largely the same. And it did. It did. It did. It didn't reduce the challenge of the mission. And that's kind of part of it. I think a lot of people were using Blakebeard Stash to consistently get through ventures without any trouble at all. So Epic decided that instead of letting ventures be somewhat bearable, they would nerf our favorite method to try and enjoy the game mode. That's my cynical perspective. I think ventures is a garbage game mode i just ran a poll yesterday asking my community how they feel about ventures it seems like 47 percent is neutral which surprised me uh 47 44 percent don't enjoy ventures at all but only nine percent of the nearly four thousand votes said they actually enjoy ventures nine percent Ugh. yeah if nine percent of your community doesn't even enjoy ventures then maybe nerfing our favorite team perk for it is not the right direction to be taking things so yeah you guys are obviously going to tell me your opinion in the comments down below but yeah peg legs also break faster and you can uh only hold six so that in my one game didn't seem to matter but it's something to consider so yeah there's a blakebeard stash talk i'm sorry i wasn't as eloquent as i could be but you know i'm just trying to get through a lot of information here so improvements and bug fixes let's talk about that real quick they oh yeah this is actually a big deal this is actually a big deal we've separated the filter and sort sec yeah, yeah, yeah so check this out when you are checking out your hero loadouts and you're picking your commander or support or support there is a sort button down here if i go over here hi look at that sort button in the bottom right and you can click whatever your button is assigned mine is z i can sort by the level of my commanders the name of my commanders which is really really useful this is the commander name if you do this in support it will be their support perk so you're sorting by the name of their perk uh like a vast mateys bang and pow etc you can filter by rating and level so you have all of your lower level uh characters out of the way i think that's really useful i have already used this a couple of times because i had to change around my loadouts a lot today that is really cool it's a nice quality of life feature. It's not the search bar that we want, but it's close to it, and I'll take it. I'll take it. The contender melee now properly stuns enemies, which is fine. I think there's like one person in the world who cared about that. Primal Shotgun's Frenzy perk for eliminating Miss Monster now persists after switching weapons. If you don't know, Frenzy increases your fire rate and I think damage, or is it just fire? Let's go find out together. Basically, when you switched off the weapon, it stopped uh, activating that perk. I was able to test that and confirm, so I'm glad that that's working now. I don't actually know where the Primal Shotgun is, so I'll pause and be right back. Here we are, got all the primal weapons right here. So, Eliminating Miss Monster Frenzy gives you a 25% movement speed bonus and attack speed. So, attack speed also means fire rate in this case. I did confirm that with Freight Train before they laid him off. And so, I know that that's supposed to make you shoot faster, and now that works even if you switch weapons, which is cool. Bull Rush now consistently grabs husks, which is great. That perk apparently has been bugged for a long time, and I, I believe it. Fix an issue where Headshot Explosion perk was not working as intended. So, now when you do Headshot Explosion, it should do the actual amount of damage it's supposed to do. I reported this to Epic 
a long time ago, <laughs> over a year ago. Uh, healing now works for some traps uh, when they weren't working before. That's good because healing every few seconds is a pretty major perk. It's a very popular one and that just didn't work before. So yeah. And down chrome husks no longer attach themselves to a player when heavy attacking them with a Sir Lancelot. That's a really specific bug, but that now works. So yeah. Kind of a big update. I had to record a ton of gameplay for this. I'm hoping this wasn't too um, shoddy of a video. I'll have all this information in the description because Archer was super, super thorough, and I want you guys to have all the all the all the words. And um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Subscribe. I'll be um, checking out more of this in future videos. I'm sure because some of these like cloak shadow really got me excited, and I uh, I want to see how good that is. Really, really, really. So uh, yeah, goodbye. Uh, I'll see you guys, see you guys next time.